Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Air Space uh, Conference and Trade Show in National Harbor, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. And we have with us uh, the man who's got the two coolest titles in the United States Navy, Rear Admiral Tim Gallaudet, who is the oceanographer and navigator of the Navy. Sir, thanks very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Thanks. Um, you, one of your uh, priorities is Task Force Ocean, this, this sort of initiative to sort of digitize uh, the ocean space. Talk to us a little about, about the initiative and why it's so important for the United States Navy. Sure. Well, this is a CNO directed effort. He's looked at our competition and not only in our overall warfighting capability, but the understanding of our, of our ocean conditions as well as our ability to exploit the, the ocean conditions. And he sees that we're, falling, we're at risk of falling behind our competitors. So our goal is to basically advance the state of ocean science and ocean understanding uh, in the U.S. and specifically in the U.S. Navy. You know, it's often been said that we know more about the surface of the moon than we know about the oceans and, and you know, all the complex dynamics that go into it. That's something that you've studied your entire life, both as a scientist but also as a professional naval officer. You know, what are some of the areas of greatest focus from your standpoint to better understand this domain? You know, what are, what are the parts of it that we don't understand as well as, as, as you and the CNO think we should? Sure. Well, first of all, you're absolutely right. We've only explored 5% of the entire ocean volume, and we only mapped to modern specifications 20% of the seafloor. So there are a lot of holes in, in, in our understanding and our knowledge and our databases about the ocean, and so we just need to get it better. And so that's going to allow us, to, by knowing the operating environment of the U.S. Navy better than our competitors, it's going to, it's going to allow us to be better than them. So what are some of the specific areas that you guys are, are delving into? We, we have five main lines of effort here. The first one is uh, observing and sensing. So it's really advancing uh, the collection aspects of the ocean environment. So it's unmanned systems, underwater vehicles, drifting buoys, uh, satellites, everything we can do to observe the ocean within it and on top of it. The second piece is modeling and predicting the ocean environment. That's using supercomputer models with uh, advanced physics behind them. A lot of research to get better and, and understand uh, how to develop those and advance them. The third piece are the applications or tactical decision aids that allow you to position assets better depending on the environmental variability. Big effort in the underwater acoustics there. And then the, the other two pieces are uh, retaining and uh, recruiting more a more talented wor uh, technical workforce. Uh, we have a lot of great experts that are aging out in the uh, labs, the warfare centers, the universities, and, and we, need to, we need to reinvigorate our technical workforce. And the last piece, there's a strategic communications line of effort. Uh, under, getting out to the public, getting out to uh, universities, talking about the importance of understanding the ocean, doing the research and science behind it, uh, so that we can, again, recruit uh, more talent into uh, the, the universities and uh, the labs and, and the oceanography, naval oceanography enterprise. What are, what are um what are some of the challenges? Are you finding access to the kind of talent that you need, given that this is a generational turnover that you're looking at? A lot of guys have Cold War experience or started in that period that are now aging out. Are you getting that, that young, new interest that you guys need? Right now, no. Uh, we, our, com our competitions are the Google, the private sector, Amazon. And it, what we need to do is, is turn that around. Uh, and so we, that's why the recruiting effort and the strategic communications will be so important. Uh, and so there's that. that. That's probably one of the biggest challenges. The other is investments. In the Cold War, Reagan era, uh, Secretary Lehman, CNO Watkins, uh, we really had a significant investments, number of people, a number of survey ships. Uh, probably ha I have half of what we had then. And our goal is to basically get back to that, 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 that level of effort, level of investment, number of people, uh, so again, we can advance our capability and stay ahead of the competition. And how much budget would that require? Because right now, you know, there is a concern that there won't be as much budget as will be needed. And there are a lot of other competing priorities. Folks don't talk, for example, about military sea lift command, but their ships are also pushing 44 years old. How much of an investment is required to get you where you need to be to execute the mission that the CNO has given you? Sure, I, I haven't done the analysis, okay, but I can tell you this. My, in, in the Naval Oceanography TOA, and I'm not included Office of Naval Research, but our, ours is only $350 million, and I believe I can get back to where we want to be uh, with the order of maybe $500 million. So you were talking about a, a, an increase on level that would be, what, one half of 1% of a DDG, you know, or an LCS. It's, it's minor, and the return on investment would just be absolutely extraordinary because the efforts you know, that we'll, we are making now and we want to make in the future are keeping safe and effective the, the operations of billion-dollar platforms like SSNs, 
SSBNs, our, our Desron destroyers. So the ROI is really huge for this effort. Does, um, one last question I'm gonna to have to ask you because your office is something that also looks at climate. Climate has become kind of a hot and controversial topic. Do you see any change at all in terms of um, some of the priorities as outlined by the president, but the work that you guys are doing on a daily basis? No, because uh, if you look at Secretary Mattis' hearing um, for his nomination and the questions for the record he, that he submitted afterwards, he clearly stated that climate change is affecting the DOD. We need to consider it in our strategic planning, and the Navy's been doing that, and we will continue to do it. I'm not really concerned. I don't think the administration's going to counter us on that. They know and appreciate, I'm sure, from the economic standpoint, that we need to understand or stand long-term uh, climate and weather variability uh, to, for economic as aspects as well as national security aspects. Sir, thanks very, very much. And if there's an opportunity ever to go out on one of your ships and see the cool work you guys are doing, we'd love to do that. We would welcome you, Vago, anytime. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks.